Today we will visit the beautiful and fantastic Kalmar Castle, Swedish, Kalmar Slot, in Kalmar, Kalmarlan, Sweden. It was a beautiful spring day. I would like to point out that all drone footage was filmed according to the Swedish restricted airspace regulations and with the permission of the air traffic control at Kalmar Airport, since the whole area is a controlled and restricted airspace. Towards the end of the video, I have included some photos of what it looks like inside the castle. Let's talk a little bit about the history of Kalmar Castle. Around 1180 a round defensive tower was built at Kalmar Sun and a harbour constructed on the site where Kalmar Castle now stands. The tower's purpose was to protect the area from attacks by pirates and other enemies. By the beginning of the 1200s, Kalmar was established as a city. At the end of the 13th century King Magnus Ladulas had a new fortress built with a curtain wall, round corner towers and two square gatehouses surrounding the original tower. Located near the site of Kalmar's medieval harbour, it has played a crucial part in Swedish history since its initial construction as a fortified tower in the 12th century. One of the most significant political events in Scandinavia took place at Kalmar Castle in 1397, when the Kalmar Union was formed, a union of Denmark, Norway and Sweden, including Finland, organized by Queen Margaret I of Denmark. The union also worked as a counterweight to the German Hanseatic League. With the coronation of Gustav Vasa in Sweden in 1523, the union was formally dissolved. During the Swedish rebellion against Denmark in 1520, the fortress was commanded by Anna Eriksdotter, Bielk, who at the death of her spouse, Johan Mornsen, Nat Okdag, in the middle of the rebellion against Denmark in 1520, took control over his fiefs and defended Kalmar against Denmark. In the 16th century Kalmar Castle was expanded and renovated under the direction of King Gustav I and in the hands of his sons King Eric XIV and King Johan III, monarchs of the House of Vasa, giving it a renaissance feel fit for a king, the feel it still has today. Both Eric XIV and Johan III hired artists and carpenters from Europe to modernize the castle architecture and decorations. During the Kalmar War 1611-1613, Governor Christosum gave up the castle to the Danes on 3rd August 1611. He was branded a traitor and according to tradition, his face is the one engraved on the staircase before the eastern section of the castle. The Danes held the castle until 1613. After the Treaty of Roskilde in 1658, the castle was no longer needed to protect the old border and it lost its strategic location. It was therefore no longer needed for military defense. Royal visits became increasingly rare and the grand halls were used for other purposes. There were prison cells and even a distillery. During the Kalmar War the Kalmar castle suffered heavy damage and was badly damaged by a fire in 1642. Repairs had begun but from the end of the 17th century the castle was allowed to fall into disrepair. Before we continue to talk about and watch this very beautiful castle, let's have a view over Kalmar city from above. As you can see, Kalmar city is a very spread out city and as you will see shortly, the city center is fairly small. The city center is now coming in view from the right.
As we are approaching the city center, one can see the old water tower to the left and Kalma Cathedral, Kalma Domkirka, straight ahead. In the background we can also see the Erland Bridge, Olinsbronn, one of the longest bridges in Europe, being over 6 kilometers long. This bridge will take you from the mainland to the island of Erland. When it comes to the Kalmar Cathedral, the work on it started in 1660, but because of some interruptions, it wasn't finished until 1703. Now we are back at watching the castle, so let's learn a bit more about it. We will start with restoration. In 1856, architect Frederick Wilhelm Skolander, 1816-1881, initiated reconstruction slash restoration work at Kalmar Castle. His pupil Helgo Zetterwald continued restoring Kalmar Castle in the 1880s. Architect Karl Merle drew up the plans and other documents. The work began in 1885 and by 1891 the castle had gained the silhouette it bears today. In 1919 Professor Martin Olsen was given the assignment to be in charge with the continuing restoration of earthworks, the moat, the bridge and the drawbridge. Work continued until 1941, when the castle was once more surrounded by water. Now a little bit about the castle today. Today, Fully restored to its original glory, Kalmar Castle is a popular tourist attraction and is even a wedding venue. The castle displays a variety of exhibits, including permanent exhibits that tell the dramatic history of the castle, but also temporary exhibitions with different themes. There are also interactive touch screens where you find some 400 texts, anecdotes, and stories. The texts are written in Swedish, English, and German. Kalmar Castle is now one of Sweden's best preserved Renaissance castles and is open to the public.
Before we end this video, let's have a look at some photos from inside the castle. As one can see, the inside of the castle is beautifully decorated.